What's up guys? So I wanted to follow up. I did get a microphone. However, I cannot fig figure out how to essentially pair it to the GoPro. So it has a couple different um, cables. I'm trying to see, um, I think there's an additional program that I need to run it. So I'm just kind of uh, short on time today. Just being very honest, work has been absolutely crazy. Um, just been working until super late, almost midnight last two nights and uh, really struggling to make today's video. However, I still wanna make it. Um, Wednesdays are usually a little bit slower of a day for me, actually very uh, much slower. And yet today has already been crazy. So trying to make sure I do obviously this and also handle my duties for my actual occupation. So, um, I w um, so today I'm doing a follow-up video for the actual staccato so we're over 1500 rounds through it now um, with the ignis ports that's not counting anything beforehand into that that's just strictly since i've got it back from vulcan machine works um so want to do just like some some re uh i guess some uh follow up on just everything i fully cleaned the gun now but i did take a video when i had taken it apart originally um, to kind of show you how it looked um, after I'd shot it. However, this is now what it looks like since I've cleaned it. So my honest um, feedback is that I haven't noticed anything as far as like difference in reliability. Um, there's been no malfunctions. Um, wear is exactly the same. The only thing that I noticed is when I got it back from Vulcan, you can see they kind of covered the, the flag there, which kind of is a little bit of OCD thing for me, um, but it has not had any issues. I have had, since I've had this set up, I have had the Surefire on here. I haven't had any malfunctions, it still works. It's incredibly stiff, so it's kind of hard to turn on or off. It seems like this one going down is a little bit easier, but nevertheless, it is a little bit stiffer. Um, there's a little bit of wear here where the um, actual slide release goes. Um, all the buttons, everything is still very, very tight. I don't have any play, as you can see. I'm like pushing on it and there's no play in the slide, which I really like about this gun. Um, I haven't noticed anything other than like when you get to like maybe 500 rounds, you'll start to get some, some um, propellant that comes back on your glass here. Um, so you'll get a little bit of that. Uh, to kind of obscure your vision. That's the only thing that I've noticed, but all in all, um, a little bit of wear here on the actual hammer on the inside there. You can see in there. Um, but it's held up fantastic. Uh, everything feels exactly the way it does. The mag release is still incredibly stiff. I thought that would have loosened up and been a little bit more. Not that that's an issue. I should prefer it to be kind of um, you know, the same as it feels from the factory. You, usually when you start shooting, you know, a thousand, two, three thousand rounds through a gun, it starts to get kind of sloppy, um, which I haven't actually experienced that with my M18 um, or this one, which I really like. Um, it's been a, a fantastic gun. I'm trying to think of anything else. I, you know, just off the top of my head, I'm just really trying to provide these videos so that way if you think oh i'm going to spend four thousand dollars on a gun or three thousand or even you know i actually didn't even spend anywhere you know with all the modifications i'm probably close to four i'm, I'm just a little bit over four thousand including the sro um on this one however if you were just to get a plain a plain jane staccato um you know you can get those right around two thousand dollars and uh they're excellent shooters out of the box um, if you wanted to just do the porting, you could probably get the porting done and re-DLC'd and shipped and back to you for probably about 600 bucks. I'd put you about 2,600 bucks if you can deal with the iron sights. Um, then you essentially you'd be pretty close to where I'm at. And then that's obviously without a light, but um, you know, nevertheless, and without the trigger job that I have in here, but it still was a very accurate gun out of the factory. Um, and you know, the porting is not going to make it. So that way you're increasing your tolerances on like the, the, the sloppiness from like the slide or anything like that. That's just direct fitment from the manufacturer. So really I'm just trying to kind of, um, just give you guys an idea of like, if you spend as much money on a gun like this, what am I going to get now? I have noticed in the X5 Legion, which I made a video of, the slide is getting very, very sloppy in that. I don't know if that's gonna cause any actual accuracy or reliability issues or anything down the line. However, it, you know, it's just kind of uncommon. I did show obviously the extended um, 
ownership of my X macro and the corrosion that's starting. Um, this gun is exactly in the same box that I keep the X macro. So I find it very interesting along with the other ones. Um, I'm actually gonna move it out and put it in its own environment um, just so that way it's just not spreading corrosion. I mean, it wouldn't be able to spread I wouldn't think it would be able to spread corrosion from one gun to another one, but it definitely is just something that, I don't know, it's just kind of a little bit weird. So I'm gonna actually pursue that one. I'm gonna send the X macro back to SIG. I know I'm not gonna see the gun for several months, which is gonna be a bummer, uh, but I'm not using it anyways. And I figure that if they do provide a fix, hopefully I can provide some insight for other people that currently have the gun. Um, it's just kind of a, a sucky thing to do. I hate dealing with customer service and I'm gonna have to mail the gun out and then, you know, give them a description, write all that, and then keep updated with it and, and do all that. But nevertheless, that's uh, kind of what the purpose of the channel is to try to help out the public. So, you know, I'm gonna send my gun off and if they do nothing for me, then you will know they'll do nothing for you. So no reason to send off your gun for two or three months, especially if you need it. If they're not gonna do anything for you, it'd probably be better off to sell it or trade it in. So just a couple of things um, there. Now I will insert the physical um, cleaning video now. And now that we're back, um, you can kind of see now that it's fully cleaned. Um, I really do love everything about this gun. Extended ownership uh, of this gun has been fantastic. I haven't had any malfunctions. I don't really take care of it as much as they claim you have to baby these guns. And it's been a fantastic firearm. There's nothing that I would complain that I want to change about it. Um, I haven't really noticed the magazines. That's something that people said, oh, over time the magazines get really weak. They won't have lockback, anything like that. I've had lockback on everything. I haven't had any issues with any of the magazines. I only have, um, you know, a couple of them. I don't, I don't have like 10 or anything crazy. So I've actually been reusing those same magazines to conduct all these searches. So from where we'll go from here, we'll do another update at 3,500 rounds. So we kind of went 750. Um, I'm over 1,500, but we're just going to call this the 1,500 uh, round review. And then... Um, we'll, we'll check back once I, so I'm going to do my next checkpoint. It'll actually be over 3,500, but we're going to do 2000 rounds through this gun without stopping, um, or cleaning or anything like that. Not without stopping, but without cleaning. Um, so that way you guys can get a, a good, you know, another gauge there. And then I'll probably do one more after the 3,500 and then other for that. I mean, this is just a gun that, that I physically enjoy. So I'm not trying to actually trash this gun. I don't think I'm being too hard on it either. I just want to see, you know, if, if I start to get some, some play in the slide, um, what things are going to feel like, but for the most part, everything feels exactly the same from when it, the day that I got it, which I really like that about. Uh, I think that's a huge plus for Staccato. Um, I would definitely recommend them. 1500 rounds is enough to at least start to get a little bit of minimal play and stuff and kind of have like a indication that you're gonna have an issue with something. And I haven't experienced that at all with this. So I'm really, really excited to see how this holds up. I know, um, you know, from, from the brain and other people that own it, they come highly recommended and I'm, I'm a true believer already. Uh, but nevertheless, we're still going to conduct tests on it and kind of go from there um, and just see, uh, make sure that, you know, what we find is completely the same as what other people are finding. Because uh, I had several people recommend me the X Macro and, you know, the rust, rust issue is definitely something that has been plaguing the Internet. It doesn't seem to have been every single X Macro. Nevertheless, I really want to just, you know, update people on if you do get an unlucky gun that has the rust. I don't think it's every single one of them, but if you do have one of the FCUs that's starting to rust, um, what is the manufacturer physically going to do for you, right? So all in all, again, that's something completely aside from this gun. This gun has been fantastic. 
10 out of 10, it's my favorite gun to shoot. Um, another thing that I've noticed is the trigger was actually cleaned up a little bit. The weight is exactly the same, but the trigger is amazing on this gun. I love it. I, I, this is by, my, by far my favorite trigger I've ever had. And I don't think that, you know, any other, like there's just no way a striker fire uh, firearm can compete with this. You can get very close and you can get with through a lot of training, get used to something similar. And you can be very accurate. I mean, if you're a really, really good shooter and you have a really good striker fire trigger, you could shoot better than somebody who's not trained who shoots with this. That's not what I'm saying. I just, as somebody who shoots a lot, have really, really come to appreciate all the time and effort that Staccato had for Vulcan to even be able to, you know, modify it and make it this good. And as it breaks in, it only gets crisper and crisper. Um, so all in all, uh, I would say 10 out of 10 recommend this, um, you know, the Staccato brand. Uh, I've heard good things about the C2 as well. Um, at some point, I do plan to venture on to either get a C2 or an XC. I think I'm leaning more towards an XC. We're just kind of going through some scrutiny right now where I live on, on gun law, so I don't know if the XC will even be a possibility. Um, so we'll keep going. We still have several guns that, you know, are still going to go through extended round tests and just kind of see how they hold up. I'm curious on the competitor as well. Uh, next week, I want to physically do something. Uh, I want to kind of put the M18 through a little bit of its own torture test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it, um, you know, I take a shower, I'm going to put it in, in the, the room with me. So that way it's going to create some condensation. And we're going to do that for a full week and see how that goes. Now, obviously, um, I don't think that's going to create any issues with it. It's, uh, you know, those, those, you know, the, I know the Glock 19X, it was kind of, you know, the M18 was kind of a comparison of the Glock 19X and the Glock 19X, if you look on their website, is specifically made to tackle moisture and things like that. So like the PVD coating is, is made to combat that. So that way the firearm doesn't rust out. Um, but nevertheless, we have had some issues with um, the X Macro. I don't think it's going to come up with anything, but nevertheless, we're going to try it. I'm going to take some pictures of what it looks like when I get um, done in the shower, and then we can kind of compare that, you know, after seven straight days of putting it in there. Um, we'll see if it's, uh, we'll take it apart and see if there's any signs of any forming corrosion, even or anything at all. Um, you know, and kind of go from there. I think it's kind of a pointless test, but I just kind of want to try it to see if this is an issue that SIG and their fire control units that is coming, you know, uh, causing everything else or what the deal is. I've really looked around and I mean, it's really hit or miss with the X macros. So I really can't pinpoint what the actual issue is, but nevertheless, that one has me very, very interested to see what the manufacturer brings up and see what else I can figure out on it as well. Um, were they to figure out those things, I think it'd be, you know, a good option for people who concealed carry. I had somebody comment and say, hands down, best concealed carry, carry gun is the Smith & Wesson um, M&P Shield Plus Performance Center. Have to agree with him. Awesome comment. Keep the comments coming, guys. Try to keep it very positive. Um, we've broken 200 subscribers and I'm very, very happy with that. So I just want to take my, some time to thank everyone who's been liking, subscribing to these videos. We've had over 10,000 views. I think it was the last 28 days. So I'm just very, very uh, happy. And, you know, you know, today is a very stressful day for me. And I just wanted to make sure I had enough time to at least bring you guys some more content to the channel and continue to grow the page. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. And uh, next week, uh, like I said, we're going to, from today, every single day, we're going to take a picture of what it looks like when it's done. Um, as far as how much condensation is er, is building, you know, for, for moisture on all over the gun, then we're going to take it apart next week and kind of go from there. The following week after that, we're going to do a comparison that I've kind of wanted to do myself so i'm going to compare the competitor versus the um the uh, specter comp so that one's a little bit at a disadvantage for the competitor but honestly after shooting it the, com the uh, competitor shoots really really flat and accurate and it's quick so i'm just wondering how it'll stack up to the other gun being that it's a pound lighter and they're both compensated so i think that'll be an interesting one uh, and also the um competitor is is you know significantly cheaper in price so hopefully these videos are giving you guys some good good things to think about and helping you out um, with your future purchases or if you're looking to you know make a purchase or you have one you're thinking about trading hopefully these things can help you guys out um, and kind of go from there so again thank you for everyone who has supported the channel and i will see you next week